I am here with Gaia Surakil in Istanbul after a long European tour yeah. and we're sitting backstage just before you're about to go and play. So thank you so much for your time thank and meeting me. Thanks. It's a real pleasure and honor to meet you. Thank you very much. You're kind of one of the most um, renowned contemporary voices in Turkey right now, um, sort of combining elements of Turkish melodies and structure with uh, psych rock and surf rock and a bit of grunge. Um, could you tell me a little bit about this latest album? The latest album is called Consistent Fantasies Reality in English, but the original name is İstikrar Layal Hakikattir. And two or three years ago, after losing my mother, I was thinking about the difference between reality and the fantasy, the dreams. Because, you know, life is so um, weird at that moment when you lose somebody you just understand the meaning of love maybe and, and meaning of being not understanding but just you know I don't know the exact word in English but like um, feeling of it maybe so I was wondering what's the difference between living or being um, just uh, far away from this um, world mm -hmm. So I realized that um, the consistent fantasy is reality when you believe in something too much. It's kind of, I mean, it's really very hard to explain in English for me, but, you know, it's kind of a um, point that if you dream something consistently, then it becomes your reality. This was the first part of this philosophy. And the second one is this. Um, we are living in a very bad, evil world in a way. So to fight with that um, evil, we have to create our own reality, our contra-reality. So I feel and see that we are lack of imagination day by day about this capitalist world because it makes us work very much but um, dream less yeah. so i i tried to find a solution and this is my solution right now i mean i really believe that if we consistently and constantly dream together uh, we can change the reality we can manipulate it yeah and um, thank you so much for sharing that with me and i think that's something a, a realization that many people it's like deep down and people sort of know but they never have a voice to articulate it. So it's really just beautiful to hear. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks um, for sharing too. For, for you to have come and sort of come to that and gone on this musical journey and philosophical journey, you must have had quite um, a, a, a musical and creative upbringing. Could you tell me a little bit about um, what your influences were and how you started your musical journey? It's like when I try to remember my childhood, I just remember I'm making music, I'm uh, drawing, I'm making my own songs, funny songs. So this is uh, something comes from inside of me probably. Um, the first memories I remember from my childhood is full of uh, music and just painting. My, my mother was a great singer she was singing all the time at home so i was just listening to her and trying to uh, imitate her so when i was just five years old uh, i remember that i know lots of classical turkish songs which is so weird because the lyrics and everything is very heavy for a five-year-old child and it looks so funny uh, at the same time so this is something comes from um, my probably my family and my uh, subconscious mm -hmm. just waits there to pop up so when I grow up a bit I discovered my own um, kind of style of music like uh, psychedelic Turkish rock mm -hmm. uh, and some Western based rock music but before that I discovered Nirvana thanks to my brother when oh, I was great. nine or something so he was listening to Nirvana like crazy and I just said the first time I heard Nirvana it was like a game changer for me and after that the uh, door was opened yes um, so 
it started like that and it grew day by day by discovering other bands, discovering um, the unique style of uh, in my music kind of. So this is like you know a journey and you're just walking and you're discovering everything yeah. uh, with your vision. So yeah, this is some kind of thing like that. Yeah, absolutely, I think Nirvana was a game changer for a lot. Of, I know certainly for me it was really? as well. And as, as there's something that speaks to the youth in you, I suppose, and yeah. there's a musical power there which is very liberating. Exactly. <laughs> fusion come together in your music and in, in something that's completely unique and awesome yeah. and um, I, I've been in uh, your city now for a couple of weeks and I've met a lot of different musicians from a very diverse range of musicians from Iranian musicians to Fasal musicians to folk musicians and there seems to be this energy in the city a musical energy mm. um, which I don't I haven't really experienced anywhere else in the world um, what, what do you think about music in Istanbul well you know it's really beautiful because Istanbul is not just metaphorically but physically the center of cultures too many cultures just passed from this uh, road um, some of them just grew here and um, died here unfortunately but the layers are full of different musics art culture people so um, the only thing you have to do is to dig into it and just to look at it and just to feel it so when you look directly you can find the different uh, beauties inside of this city so i'm very happy you could just see that because sometimes people are blind and don't see even they live on this city oh really yeah yeah because sometimes you know the cultures you are living in can make you blind and can't let you see the differences or the um, real uh, treasure. Sometimes. So true, yeah. I mean, it's the same in London as well. I suppose you have to yeah. be looking for it sometimes. This is something anthropological about humanity. Well, I was going to ask, could you put your anthropological hat on for a moment? Because I'm about to cycle along the Black Sea um, to Georgia, um, Georgistan, I yeah. think it's called that. Uh -huh. And I was wondering if you had any advice or, or places or music to look for on my, on my route. Oh, okay. Um, I cannot give names, but I can say that you are going to discover so many beautiful things. But I can say that as an anthropologist, I don't call myself anthropologist because to be an anthropologist means too many things to do. But I've graduated from anthropology and the reason I just went to anthropology was to make uh, more layered music and art. The, the main reason was that so. Uh, thanks to that, I really uh, feel I can uh, respect to other genres and other musics and mm. people. Um, but I can say that the you know the Black Sea side of Turkey, especially, there are too many um, great musicians and uh, crazy minds. Just not just in music, but in art. For example, in painting. Yeah. Uh, my father is also from northern side of Turkey, Trabzon, and I can say that too many uh, artists came from that region. Wonderful. And, and you will, you can expect much more great musicians there. Excellent! I can't wait to go. Yeah. So it's the end of your tour now. You've, you must be tired of traveling, um, yeah. going to lots of different places. Yes. Um, what are you looking forward to doing now? You're back home. Yeah. I'm very happy to be back home, but the journey was so beautiful. I hope someday I can just have time to um, write down all these things we had. Uh, we went to Denmark, Canary Islands, Germany. It's just the previous um, tour I'm talking about. Norway, I guess. So I, I'm, I'm really happy to see these countries, but back to home. Now we are going to shoot our video clips and also we are going to give lots of concerts in Anatolia, Turkey. Um, 
and we are going to spread this music and philosophy all over the world but of course in our country too because i think people really need to um, dream and imagine much more than they do now because this is the only um, solution i guess yeah, i couldn't agree more and i loved your <laughs> album again and i thank can't you. wait to see it live thank now so much. have a great show and thank Yay. you guys thanks, thanks for you. coming and sharing Çok teşekkür ederiz.